Welcome to the second part of the three-part series on how to build a simple bookshelf. In this section, we're going to go ahead and put a face frame on to hide the plywood edges, and we're going to do that using the pocket hole system. So went ahead and milled up some pieces. We started out by rough cutting it an inch or two longer on the cross-cutting saw, jointed one edge straight, then went over to the table saw with the jointed edge against the fence and ripped them to width. And once I had all the pieces cut to width and rough length, I went over to the planer and set all the boards through and then adjusted the handle. This creates a uniform thickness. It's very important with the pocket hole system that they're as close as we can get to three quarters. But what's even more important is that all the pieces are uniform or exactly the same. And this is done, like I said, by sending them through at the same time without adjusting the handle. To check that, measure frequently or use a gauge block as I've got in this example. All right, now that we got our rough cut lumber, it's cut to width, it's plain to thickness, it's just not cut to length. Even though I count, the most plans come with a cutting list, verify these measurements. First thing I'm going to do is square up one end. Then from the end I just squared, I'm going to make my measurement or make my mark. And to guarantee that both sides are exactly the same, I'm going to use a stop block. Now that we got our styles or vertical pieces cut to length, we need to calculate the length of the cross rails. Remember, we can't sand the plywood. We only got that 32nd inch thick of an ear. The advantage of the pocket hole system is you can pre-build the entire face frame and it gets you a nice tight seam where all the pieces interlock. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to oversize this cross rail, but maybe a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch, so it creates an overhang on each side. Then we'll follow up with a trim router and a sander and it'll create a seamless transition and everybody will think you're perfect with a tape measure. Now that typically involves a lot of math. I'm trying to hold pieces. This is the system I've come up with. Put both face frame vertical pieces together, leave a little bit of overhang, hook on one side and measure. I'm going to go over to the miter saw and cut these down to size. Face frame pieces cut to actual sizes. I like to do a quick check, make sure everything looks right. You don't want to pre-build it and find out this is an inch too long by mistake. I try to teach my students that the more you measure, the more chance you have of making a mistake. However, you can't always avoid measuring. Instead of measuring the height of the shelf and then transferring this mark over to the vertical pieces, let's go ahead and just use the shelf as a template. Because otherwise we have a chance of measuring once and measuring twice and compounding the mistake. So this will guarantee a little more accuracy. We want to mark on the back sides of our pieces. And with the pocket hole system, you don't need to drill all the pieces, only the ones that intersect another one. So in our case, that's going to be the two horizontal rails. So what I like to do is put two, or put a line where I'm going to put a screw. And I typically put two on an inch and a half wide. Less than an inch and a half, I only use one, but other than that I use two. One of the nice things about this system is that the screws are self-tapping, so you don't have to be exact on where you drill the holes. What you'll see is three sets of holes on the drilling jig. We're going to use the two that are closest together, and we're going to eyeball center the board between those two. So it kind of drills them in the middle, evenly spaced. Insert the drill bit into the sleeve, start up the drill, and drill down until it hits the collar. Do this for the other one also. Once you get that one done, make sure you rotate the piece. Just flipping it would not be a good thing. Recenter it. And repeat the procedure. We're moving on to assembly. I got everything laid out. Install my bit. Space frame clamp ready. You don't have to, but I recommend putting a little bit of glue on the end of the board. Layout marks are really going to help in this step label on the back side, nobody will ever see it. So position your piece to where just the corner hangs off the edge. Adjust your face frame clamp. Line up the top edge. You don't necessarily have to have them tight because the screw is going to take care of that for you. And you want it to snap. You want it to lock into place. Another recommendation I have is to quick grip the piece down to your workbench so it doesn't move on you. Finally, set your drill clutch to about halfway, in our case it's 12 out of 24, and set your drill to 
low speed, high torque. What you want is a certain point you want the clutch to kick in so it doesn't bury the screw and drive it out the front. Position the screw in the smaller hole and drive it home. When you hear the clutch kick in. Now you're just going to repeat that procedure all the way around for as many pieces. If you had a, a fixed middle shelf, you'd want to go ahead and put that one in there also. One tip I've got for you. A lot of people think, oh, let's go ahead and attach this side. Well, the advantage of the pocket hole system is it pulls everything nice and tight. You'll have a difficult time getting this bottom one in there if you do. So, go ahead and attach the bottom first, then attach the other side. All right, there we go. We've got a face frame. Make sure you clean up any glue squeeze out. And we'll do a little bit of final sanding to make sure the transitions are perfectly smooth. Next step, we'll attach it to the bookshelf. Okay, I'm dry fitting everything together. A little bit of overhang on the sides, which is what I want, and the bottom shelf here lines up nice and flush. So now that that looks good, I'm going to set this aside. Apply a thin bead of glue on all the pieces. I tend to start down at the bottom shelf and get just a little bit of overhang on the back side here and line up that one nail corner. Okay, now that we got this corner nailed, we're going to bring up the face frame flush with the shelf on the other side. Use your finger, don't use just your sight. If there's any bowing in the shelf right here, you can push up or pull down to line that up. Make sure your fingers are clear when you do go to nail. All right, now that we've got our bottom shelf nailed, we can adjust this, making sure we've got a little bit of overhang on each side, putting about three or four nails. Remember, every nail you put in, you got to putty up. Before we move on, you want to putty up all the little nail holes and sand away any excess and check these seams. Now that we've got all the nails puttied up, everything's flush and smooth, we need to take care of the overhang. And a lot of us would grab the sander in this case, but then you risk a damage in the outside veneer. So we're going to grab our router and install a flush trim bit. What the flush trim bit does, the wheel traces the edge and only cuts as far as deep as we've got it set. And we're going to set it to just a little over three quarters of an inch deep. That creates an almost seamless transition. Well, we've almost got this section wrapped up. The other thing we need to do is get this so it fits in here. And we need to take care of this edge. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure the inside width about an eighth to a quarter inch less. Remember, it's going to be resting on the pegs. And when I measure the width, I'm going to account for a solid piece of oak going on the front. Put in your pegs, tip the shelf into place, and there you go. This concludes the second part of the video. Make sure you clean everything up, ease all the corners, putty up where it needs to be. The details, guys, makes a difference.